Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving GRE math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the revised GRE, the second edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. We are finished, we are almost finished doing all the problems from this book. If there is any problem at all that gives you that gives you difficulty, and if you wish to watch the solution to the problem, you will find the solutions, as I said, to almost all the problems from this book, from day number 251 through 400, from 251 through 400. This book, second edition, happens to contain the exact same problems in most cases, and when appearing exactly on the same page numbers as the ones that appeared in the first edition of the revised GRE. We are finished doing all the problems from this book. In the event that you are interested in watching the original solutions to the problems, you will find the original solutions from day number 1 through 250. Day 1 through 250, original solutions tend to be a little lengthier, they tend to be a little bit more in depth. Right now, we are in the process of solving some quantitative comparison questions. Quantitative comparison questions are still a big chunk of the exam, they have not gone away. Unfortunately, the newer books, the revised GRE books that I showed you, do not provide us with sufficient uh, practice problems to get better at these problems. So to get some additional to, to get some additional practice, from day number 401, we begin some sol we begin sol so solving some quantitative comparison questions out of this book here, the 10th edition of the general GRE. Right now we are on page number 328. Please turn to it. Page number 328, problem number 12 is what we are about to do. Problem number 12, when it appeared in the exam, problem number 12, when it appeared in the exam, more than half the people had trouble with it, only 44% of the people got it right. Here's what the problem says. In column A, we have twice, twice the sum, twice the sum of the roots, twice the sum of the roots of of the equation x squared minus 3x plus 2 equals to 0. And in column B we have in column B we have 6, a quantity of 6. This quantity versus 6. This problem obviously as you can see deals with the quadratic equations. We have to find the roots of this equation. We have to find the solutions to this equation. And the process that we're going to employ, the process that we're about to use is what is known as factorization. We're not going to use we're not going to use quadratic formula. We're going to use factorization. If you need some more help in factorization, if you need some more practice on factorization, or for that matter any any math concept at all, just go to my channel, type in factorization, type in my name, Kesh factorization and Keshwani, and look for it. It will pop right up. Or you can search right on the on the YouTube uh, search uh, box and you will just type in factorization along with my name as I said, Keshwani, and you will see at least 10 videos on the topic. But here we're just going to quick. So here I'm going to do this this process in a, in a little bit of a quicker way, because otherwise we'll be here forever. As I said, if you need in-depth help on this concept, the videos are there. Just look for them. In factorization, what we're looking for is this is negative three here. Let's put this equation here so we can talk x squared minus three x plus two. What we're looking for is that we're looking for two numbers whose sum two numbers whose sum has to equal has to equal negative 3. That negative 3 comes from here. We are also looking for two numbers whose product happens to be the product of these two coefficients, 1 times 2. 1 times 2 is 2, so we're looking positive 2, that is. That's very important that we pay attention to that. We're looking for two numbers whose product happens to be positive 2, whose sum has, happens to be negative 3. Now that's the trick part. You have to think of two such numbers so that when you add them you get negative 3 and when you multiply them you get positive 2. Can you think of two numbers? Pause the video if you have to for a second. Pause the video and put your thinking cap on and see what you can do here. The two numbers that we need here are negative 2 and a negative 1. As you can see, negative 2, negative 2 plus a negative 1 is going to give us our negative 3, which is a coefficient of x here. And then negative 2, negative 2 times a negative 1, negative 2 times a negative 1 is going to give us a positive 2. We can ignore this coefficient because it's only 1. 
had there had there been a coefficient other than one or with x squared attached to x squared, then we would have had to take the uh, uh, We are still doing that. We are still we are not we are not ignoring it. It is one time positive two is what it is. It's, it's right here. Except it's just one, so we just ignore it because one times anything is just so it's two. So as you can see, the product of these two numbers is two. That's it. We found our roots. Now we have to do the factorization. So this x squared minus three x plus two can be written as x squared minus two x minus two x minus x and then plus 2 equals 0 and it, as you can see minus 2x and minus x it gives us back the negative 3x that we have in the middle now we simply have to take out the common factors we just have to look for the common factors in the, in the first two terms here we have x squared here we have 2x the common factor that these two these two terms have is x so if we take out x common we are left with x from the first one because x times x is going to give us back our x squared take out x from, if we divide 2x by x, we are left with 2, negative 2 that is. Again, x times negative 2 gives us back our negative 2x. We are done with that part. Now we look at these two terms, negative x and a positive 1, a positive 2. Negative x and a positive 2 have nothing in common. There is no, no common factors in negative x and a positive 2. When there is no common factor, we can still take a common factor. There is still a common factor of 1. It's still a common factor of 1. Should it be positive 1 or negative 1? It should be positive 1. No, it should. We're going to have to take a negative factor of negative 1. Negative 1 here. We're taking a 1 common here. So, so when we take out 1 common, negative x divided by negative 1, it gives us our x. Because x times negative 1, x times negative 1 is going to, is going to give us our negative x. And then, of course, we have here negative 2. Because negative 1 times negative 2, negative 1 times negative 2 is positive 2. I just told you I wasn't going to explain all this thing. I'm going to stop doing this thing because it's going to get very annoying. It's going to be, going to be here forever. I'm just going to pick up speed. If you have trouble, I'm just going to go. I'm going to quickly, briefly tell you what we're doing and that's it. I'm not going to explain everything, every single step in the nitty gritty details. The videos are there. Just watch them. Look for them. Just type in factorization and Keshwani and watch the videos. As I said, there are close to 10 videos on this topic on my channel. So here we go. So now we can look at this part and that part. The common factor is x minus 2. We take out x minus 2 from this guy here, we're left with x. We take out x minus 2 from this guy, we're left with negative 1, and this is equal to 0. Now we have two quantities, negative x minus negative 2, x minus a 2, and x minus 1. When we have a product of two quantities, when a times b, we are told is equal to 0, there are only two possibilities. Either, either x minus 2 is equal to 0, or x minus 1 is equal to 0. That's the only way the product of two quantities is going to be 0, one of them has to be zero, or perhaps they are both zero. So either a is equal to zero, or b is equal to zero, or both a and b are equal to zero. If this quantity is equal to zero, that implies that x equals two, that implies that x equals to positive two. And if this quantity is equal to zero, that implies that x equals to positive one. Those are our roots. Our roots that we found are positive one and a positive two. This is, this is an imply sign. This implies that x is either positive two or positive one. We're done. We are being asked to compare the twice the sum of the roots. Twice the sum of the roots. The roots are positive 2 and positive 1. So twice, I'm going to do it right here. The sum of the roots, the sum of the root is going to be positive 2 and a positive 1. Positive 2 and a positive 1, that's their sum. But we are asked to compare twice the roots. So it's 2 times this quantity. 2 plus 1 is 3. 2 times 3 is equal to 6. This is equal to 6. And that's exactly what we have in the second column. And therefore the answer is C. Therefore the answer is C. Now here's what I want you to do. Here's what I would like you to do. It's very important that you take an active part in it. You're not going to, you're not going to get anything out of it just staring at the screen and watching the solutions one after the other. This will be a sheer waste of your time. You're not going to get anything out of it. The only way you're going to learn anything the only way you're going to sharpen your skill, the only way you're going to re-remember things that you learned many, many years ago in school is by doing this problem yourself. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to give you one more problem. I'm going to set it up on the blackboard. Once I set it up, I'm going to stop talking for about five seconds. I want you to pause the video at that time. I want you to solve the problem yourself. Once you have the solutions, then once you have done your work, then compare your work against the work that you and I will do in a few seconds. Okay, so here's the next problem. Here's the bonus problem. It's not in the book. It's a bonus problem. We're done with this one. I'm going to give you an unobstructed view here for, for about three seconds so that so that you can have a chance to have a clear view. There we go. So this is a bonus problem. Let's call it 12 bonus. 
And, and again, twice the sum of the roots, twice the sum of the roots of a di different equation. Different equation. 2x squared minus x minus 6 equal to 0. And we're being asked to compare it against, we're being asked to compare it against Oh, last it. I just erased the equation, didn't I? 2x squared minus x minus 6 equals to 0 versus 1. Let's do it together. I'll give you 5 seconds to pause and unpause the video. First, do it yourself. Okay, here we go. So here what we have is negative 2x squared, uh, 2x squared rather, minus 1 times x, but that's what that is, there's a 1 here, minus 6 equals 0. So we're looking for two numbers, we're looking for two numbers so that when we add them up, we get a negative 1. We get a negative 1. That's, that's, what, that's this part. We also have to fulfill the condition that, we, that when, we, when we multiply them, the product of these two unknown quantities that we're looking for has to be such that it has to be the product of positive 2 and a negative 6. Product of positive 2 and a negative 6 is negative 12. Can you think of two such numbers so that when we add, for example, negative 6 and a positive 2, it's not going to give us negative 1. Negative 6 and a positive 2 is going to give us negative 2 when we add them up. We don't need negative, one, negative 2, we need negative 1. Similarly, a negative 2, a negative 2 and a positive 6 is going to give us positive 4. So these two numbers as we see themselves will not going to work. One is going to give us positive 4, the other one is going to give us, uh, the other one is going to give us a negative 4. The sum is going to be either positive 4 or negative 4 if you were to use these two numbers, if you were to put these two numbers here. We need the sum to be negative 1, which is why we have to think of brand new numbers. Can you think of it? I'll give you a second to see if you can think of two such numbers, so that when you add them up, you get a negative 1. When you multiply them, you get a negative 12. And those two numbers are neg negative 4 and positive 3. Why negative 4 and positive 3? Because negative 4 plus a positive 3 is going to give us negative 1. Uh, similarly, negative 4 times a positive 3 is going to give us negative 12. That's it. So those are our, those are our uh, mystery numbers. Now we can start the process. And I'm going to just do the process because otherwise, as I said, we'll be here forever in this video. So 2x squared minus 1x is going to be written as minus 4x plus 3x. Again, as you can see, minus 4x and plus 3x is going to give us our negative 1x and minus 6 equals 0. Here 2x squared and a negative 4x have a common factor of x. Take it out and we end up with 2x minus 4. Now we look at these two. Negative 3x and a negative 6 has a, have a common factor of 3. Let's take it out and we end up with x minus a negative 2. Now that does not work here. So, oh! We, sh we cannot simply take out x here. We have a 2 and we have a 4 here. We can take out 2 also. You see I caught myself. I caught myself because if we take out a common factor of 3, watch, listen carefully, if we take out a common factor of 3, we are left with x here, and then 6 divided by 3 is going to give us, negative 6 divided by 3 is going to give us negative 2. So this and this do not match. They have to be the same before we can take out this quantity as common one more time. They do not match. This one is 2x and my negative 4, this one is x and negative 2. That's how I caught myself that we cannot just simply take out x, we have to take out 2x, because that's also a common factor. So if we take out 2x, we are left with, we are left with x. And the first term, because 2x squared minus 2x is x, and then negative 4x divided by 2x is going to give us a negative 2. Voila. Now, as you can see, this is same as that one. We can take that out as a common factor. So x minus 2 comes out, and we are left with here. Here we are left with 2x, and here we are left with positive 3. And this whole thing has to be equal to 0. That's it. So again, we have two quantities. Again, we have two quantities whose product is 0, which means either the first quantity is equal to 0, or the second quantity is equal to 0, or maybe they are both equal to 0. Let's do, this, let's do it here. So, we, we carry this on from here. That implies that either, either x minus 2 is equal to 0, which implies that x would have to be positive 2, or, or 2x plus 3. 2x plus 3 is equal to 0, which implies that x would have to be negative 3 over... 2. Negative 3 over 2. Those are our root. Negative 3 over 2 and a, and a 2. That's it. We're done. Now we figure out the sum of the roots and we take 2 times the amount. Let's do it here. So the sum of the roots, that's the sum of the root is going to be positive 2 
positive 2 plus a negative 3 halves. Those are the two roots. Let me take their sum. That's the sum of the two roots. And now it says twice that amount, twice the sum of the roots. So we multiply the quantity by 2. So let's, let's finish it up here. 2 minus a 3 half, 3 halves is 1 and a half. 2 minus 1 and a half is just half. 2 minus 1 and a half is just half. So it's 2 times half, 2 times half, and of course 2 times half, 2 is going to cancel out, and it turns out, it turns out that twice the sum of the roots of the equation that we started out with happens to be exactly 1. 2 times the sum of the roots is exactly equal to 1, which is exactly what they give us in the other column, and therefore answer again is C. Answer one more time is C. We're going to do one more for practice. I'll give you a few seconds to have an abstract view and then we're going to do one more. By the way, let's, let's play with this thing for a little bit. We're done with this thing. I'm going to erase everything. We're done. Let's play it. Let's play with it. Play with it a little bit. What if the what if the question instead of saying what it says right now, what if they had told us instead of instead of twice the sum, instead of twice the sum, what if the problem told us product of product of the roots versus versus zero? What would they, what would, what would have been the answer in this case? It's a new problem. It's a new problem. Same exact thing, but a different different version of it, different rendition of it. Well, it's very simple. We already have the roots, positive two and negative three halves are the roots. So instead, instead of sort of instead of twice the sum, now they're asking us for the product of the roots. So let's do that. Positive two, positive two times negative three halves. Though that is the product of the roots, and the product of the roots is going to be two are going to cancel out, and we end up with negative three. Negative three versus a zero. Now the answer is B. In this case, the answer would be B. Let's do one more, shall we? What I'm trying to point out here is that, what I'm trying to make you understand is that there are several different angles that they can take. You can look at the same problem from several different vantage points. They can present the same exact problem in a variety of different ways. Do you understand? They're just playing with your mind, obviously. Let's do one more, shall we? One more again, I'm going to ask you to pause the video after I give you the problem. Do the problem yourself and then compare your work against the work that we'll do together. Here's, here's the question. Column A. Sum of the roots. Sum of the roots. Now you have to pay attention here as to what, what the problem is asking. Here it simply says sum of the roots. It does not say twice the sum. So if it does say twice the sum, you have to keep that in mind. You have to Once you find the sum of the roots, you have to take uh, two times that amount or thrice the, thrice the sum. Whatever it says, you have to pay attention. Here is simply the sum. Sum of the roots of the equation of the equation x squared plus x minus 380 equals to 0 versus column B in column B we have a 0 I'm going to give you 5 seconds to pause and unpause the video as I said so solve the problem yourself and then compare your work against the work that we'll do together in a few seconds Okay, so here we go. Again, what we are looking for are two numbers. Here you see it's positive x. Positive x is the same as, this thing is the same as x squared plus 1x. That's what that is. There is a 1 in here. When there is no coefficient, there is a coefficient of 1. So it's x squared plus 1x minus 380. So now we're looking for two numbers. Now we're looking for two numbers so that when we add them up, you get a positive 1. And when we multiply them, we get a negative 380. When we multiply them, we get a negative 380 negative 380 because this one is just one so it's just one times it's just one times 380 which is just 380 can you think of two such numbers that's the trick part that is the trick part this is where the thinking comes into it this is where the practice comes into it the more you practice obviously with any any like anything else in life the better you will get it I'm, I'm, I know I'm pointing out the bloody obvious I realize that I'm fully cognizant of that but we have to think of some some numbers that satisfy these two conditions. Like two numbers such that their sum happens to be positive 1 and their product has to be negative 380. Now the trick is this, the trick is this. We are trying to figure out the factors of 380. That's what we are trying to figure out, factors of 380. 
is since it ends in a zero, anything that ends in a zero, whether it's 380 or whether it's 3,800 or whether it's 38,000 or whether it's 38 million, it doesn't matter. For example, if somebody asks you to find out the factors of 38 million, if you leave the 38 million the way it is, you'll be there until the cows come home. Do you understand? You'll be there, sitting there, trying to figure out all the factors of 38 million until, uh, until such time as you begin to dangle your grandkids from your knee. We don't want that. Do you understand? The trick is this. When you have something ending in zero, when you have something ending in zero, break it up. Break this up as 38 times 10 raised to 6. In our case, we don't have 10 raised to 6. We just have 380. We just have 380. So it's just 38 times 10. And now find the factors of these two numbers separately, instead of keeping it as one big number. Keeping it one one big number creates a lot of work. It's very simple now. Factors of 10, factors of 10 are very simple. It's just 5 and 2. 5 and 2. And factors of 18 are going to be 19 times 2. 19 times 2 is... 19 times 2 is... 38. Notice I put down 19 times 2 and not 2 times 19 for a reason. Because now I want to combine these numbers here, right here. When I saw 19, I knew that 19 is not going to fall in, the, uh, fall in that group because that's too big of a number as it is. There you go. So now, 2, 2 times 5 times 2, 2 times 5 times 2 is 20. There you go. 20 and a 19. 20 and a 19. 20 and a 19. The question is, which one takes which sign? Do I put a positive sign here and a negative sign there or the other way around? Well, it's very simple. We need a sum to be positive 1, which means bigger number has to have a positive sign. And 19 will have a negative sign. There you go. 20 times negative 19, 20 times positive 20, positive 20 times the negative 19 is going to give us negative 380, and positive 20 plus a negative 19 is going to give us positive 1. Those are our factors. That's how we're going to break up. We're going to break up our 1x as that's it. We're done with this part. I'm going to raise it. We're going to break up our 380 as, or rather, we're going to break up our 1x as x squared plus a 20x minus a 19x minus 380 equals to 0. I'm going to pick up speed now, take out the x common, we end up with x plus 20. Here we're going to end up with a common factor of negative 19. Negative 19 comes out and here we are left with just the x. And from here, negative 380 divided by negative 19 is going to be positive 20. Of course it's going to be positive 20 because we know that positive 20 times the negative 19 equals negative 380 equals 0. And now we have a common factor of x plus 20 and x right here. x plus 20 comes out. From here we are left with x. And from here we are left with negative 19. Pro product of these two quantities is 0. That implies, this implies that either x has to be equal to negative 20 or x has to be equal to positive 19. x is either negative 20 or positive 19. That's it. We can go back and finish this up very quickly. The sum of the roots is very simple now. Sum of the root is just negative 20, negative 20, plus, plus the positive 19. Negative 20 plus the positive 19 is negative 1. And negative 1 is less than 0. 0 is what we have in the second column. Negative 1, negative 1 is less than 0. And therefore the answer to this question is B. But as you can see, when these type of questions appear in the quantity to comparison question, if you, happen to, if you happen to get a question of this nature in your exam, in the second section, second section of math, listen very carefully before I actually, I was about to close the video, but a thought just comes to my mind, I will share with you. The first section that they give you of the math section is just everything, it's just there, it's not, it's, not, it's not customized, it's just a generic section that they put together a question. Based on how you do in the first section of the math, they are just the difficulty level of the questions that appear in the second section of the math that you're going to get. So if you happen to see something like this in the second section, that's actually a very good sign. That tells you that you must have done quite well in the first section, that they're giving you a harder question. These questions are not meant for everybody. As you can see, more than half the people, I showed you before, 44 percentile, missed it. Do you understand? I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.